All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get started using iClone 8 to start creating animations in 3D. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, if you wanna download iClone, you can do that through my link at thecharacteressentials.com slash iClone. Note that you can get a 30-day free trial at the link at the top of the page if you wanna give it a try. Also note that that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do end up purchasing through that link, I will receive a commission. But let's jump over into iClone and take a look at what it can do. So when you first open up iClone, what's gonna happen is it's gonna pop up a little window like this. And it's got some things on here that you can check out, right? It's got a demo video. It's got training resources. So Reillusion has some pretty good training resources on their website that can teach you how to do different things. Um, they've got some pretty advanced videos on there as well. So depending on what you wanna do, you should be able to find something um, associated with what you want to do. You've also got some options for freebies right here. If you wanna check out Character Creator instead, you can click on this link right here in order to do that. And so really one of the things that you should be aware of is kind of the difference between iClone and Character Creator. So while Character Creator is a tool that you can use in order to create these different characters, and you can also do a lot with animations and renderings and other things like that, iClone is more designed to help you work with the animations and the movements, right? So Character Creator is more of a tool for creating characters, while iClone is definitely more of a tool for working with those characters and having them do things, right? So you can still use a lot of the same animations and other things like that, right? So for example, if I wanted this character to just have an idle animation, I can still drag that on top of the character and I can work with that like this, right? But if you wanna use the morphs and the things having to do more with like customizing your character, you're probably gonna to wanna to do more of that in Character Creator. But Within iClone, you've really got a couple different sections in here, right? You've got your content browser section over here. This is where you're gonna be able to access everything having to do with the stuff that you bring into Character Creator, right? You're gonna have access to different characters. Um, you're gonna have access to all of your clothes as well as your other models and your animations. Basically everything having to do with creating your animation, um, anything that you might bring in is going to live over here in the content browser. Um, and you can see all of these folders right here. There's a ton of stuff in here. Um, there's a lot of free stuff that comes along with this kind of to get you started, right? There's things like lighting, um, there's things like backgrounds, other things like that, that this is going to bring in here, as well as all the things that you can use in order to customize your character, right? So this is where you're gonna access a lot of that different stuff. Um, and then as well, you have access to things like being able to toggle on things like your characters and other things in your scene over here on the left-hand side of the page. So you also have access to your motion director controls, which we're definitely gonna talk about um, in the future. Motion director is something where you can actually use a keypad or your mouse um, or um, a gameplay controller in order to create animations and have your character walk. So for example, if I activate this with this character, notice how I can use my keyboard in order to set the direction that my character is going to walk. And then you can adjust things like the kind of animation that's associated with this, but you can have the character walk towards you, away from you. It's basically almost like playing a game, but then using this to record those movements, right? So you could use this in order to create a scene where a character's walking around an apartment, other things like that. So Motion Director is very powerful and we're definitely going to talk about that in the future. But that's kind of what's going on over here on the left-hand side of the page. At the top of the page, you've got just like your file or your typical toolbar, right? And that's gonna give you access to things like tools that you can use in order to move characters around, um, tools that you can use to rotate characters. Um, you know, So kind of the typical stuff that you would have in a 3D space, as well as the ability to do things like adjusting your view. Right, so I've got like pan and orbit tools in here um, that I can use in order to fly around my scene, as well as some shortcuts, um, some quick shortcuts from Motion Director. At the very top of the page, you're gonna have the same kind of bar up here where you can access different things, right? So for example, if you wanna bring in just some like primitive stuff. So if you wanted to bring in a cylinder into your scene, notice how you can just add that using that top bar 
right here. And then you can use these tools in order to move those things around. Note that in this 3D workspace, the lighting in here is actually going to be live, meaning it's going to cast shadows and other things like that. But this is going to give you access to all of those different tools. You can also adjust your workspace, right? So if you wanted your workspace to be more of a standard workspace, there's an option for that. Um, there's also kind of like a full screen. So if you want just a large view of your screen, you can use this in order to get those different viewports in here and work with those. So that that's kind of the overall, or that's kind of the top bar right here. And then within the middle of your scene, right, this is gonna be your 3D workspace. That's where you're actually going to see what you're creating in 3D and be able to adjust it. And you've got tools down here at the bottom that are gonna give you the ability to kind of scrub through this and play an animation. You can keyframe different locations, right? So for example, this is kind of like moving this object around at different points in my scene. So if I want this to be somewhere else, at a different point in my scene. Notice how it's kind of like auto keyframing those locations based on what time in my scene um, I made the particular movements. So, and then you've also got options over here on the right hand side of your page to be able to adjust different things about your character, right? So there's the option to take this character to character creator if you have that, but you've also got the ability to adjust things like the kind of motion that's applied to this character. Um, you've got the ability to adjust materials, right? So if I look at um, the head, for example, and I kind of scroll down, you're gonna have the option down here to adjust things like the skin color, right? So if I activate skin color right here, this is gonna give me the ability to adjust the character skin color um, in the scene. So you can use this in order to adjust things about the way your character looks. And so you've also got the ability to adjust wrinkles on a character, which we can talk about in a future video. And you can also add physics to your scene. So for example, let's say I wanted this object to just kind of fall, right? I can activate physics on this object. Notice how when it does that, you have the ability to add either rigid bodies or soft cloth, right? So if I click on play, Right? Notice how this is actually going to fall out of the scene. So because it has physics active, this is actually going to do like a physics simulation. So you can also adjust like, for example, the physics of the character's skirt. And so you can also control the soft body physics of the skirt in here, right? So notice how right now this is set to a certain kind skirt, but if I click on like the leather, for example. Then I run this preset, the skirt is gonna act differently than if I was to select the option for satin. So you're gonna get different folds and other things like that with the way that this skirt works. So you can use this to adjust the physics of those different things in here. And so you can also use this to add like wind or adjust the physics of the hair of the character in general. All right, and so just to kind of show you how this might work, let's go ahead and let's create a quick animation using motion director and then export it to a rendered image and one of the cool things about this is this is like fully adjustable meaning you can adjust the clothes that are on the character as well so if i scroll down into clothes and let's say and so let's say we wanted to swap out this skirt with another skirt so i'll just drag in this like blue plaid skirt in here and i'm going to replace the object that's in here so new skirt you could also replace the shirt that's in here and so we're going to keep kind of a similar look, but we're just going to swap this out just so you can see that it doesn't really matter what clothing items are on this character, right? But we've got this character in here. Well, now let's change over into a motion director workspace right here. And what we want to do is we want to take this character and we want to record an animation of her walking around. And so you can click on this character. And what we want to do is we want to click on start. And this is going to tell us that this character doesn't have any motion director data included. We're going to go ahead and tell it to load in the female default motion director data. And so when I apply this, now we're going to be able to use this character as a part of motion director. And so now what we can do is we can click on the option for start. Notice when you do this, this is gonna pop up a little window in here that basically shows you what's happening with Motion Director, right? You can see the speed as well as the mode. So I can use W, A, S, or D in order to take this character and have her walk towards or away from the camera like this. And what this is doing is this is recording this movement to a macro file. And we can go ahead and click on stop 
right here. And so what that's done is if you jump over into the macro data setting right here, notice how each one of these is going to show up um, in your list. These are all the recordings of movement that you have in uh, Motion Director. So if I click on this character, notice how I can select one of these macros and I can preview it. That's basically going to play that animation that we created in your scene. And so remember that I waited for a few frames before I started moving this character around. So we're just gonna wait for a second and then you can see that this character is going to walk around in the scene like this. And we can go through and we can edit the clip of the animation in a second, so not that big of a deal that I had some kind of like dead space in there. But notice how this character is actually displaying this animation that we created. So you can see that in our scene. And when you're done previewing this, you can just click on the stop button right here. Right now, these are kind of saved as temporary macro data in this folder. But what I want to do is I wanna use this to create a clip. You can also save this. So if you have like a certain animation or something that you wanna keep, um, you can just click on the button right here to save it. You could go ahead and rename this as well. So Camilla walking around. And you could click on the save button. That means you'll be able to access this later. But now I'm gonna create a clip. And so when I create a clip, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a motion clip from this animation. Well now, I can open up the timeline window right here and I can edit this, right? So I'm gonna click on the drop down right here and you might recognize this. This is basically um, this is basically just a timeline, just like anything that you might have inside of a video editor or something like that. But I'm gonna kind of scroll to the right a little bit till I get to the part where we started moving around, right? And I kind of sat around and waited for a while, but we wanna start maybe like right here. So what I can do is I can right click and I can um, break this clip right here. And I'm gonna delete out everything that was before this. And I wanna make sure that I set this so that the uh, start frame is zero right here. So now if I click on play in my scene and it didn't like that, so we're gonna try that again. We're gonna set our start frame right here. Um, but now if I play this, it's going to play that animation. And one of the cool things about this is you can um, fly around the scene and adjust your camera location um, in order to see this from different angles if you wanna do that. But notice how this stops at wherever my stop animation is. Well, in this situation, I want my stop animation to be when the character stops walking. So we would actually set that to be maybe like right here. So we'll go ahead and click on set stop animation. And so basically I have an animation that's like 1260 frames long like this with the characters just walking around. It's a very simple animation. We're not going to worry about camera views or anything. I might zoom in a little bit just so that you can see the character walking a little bit better. But once you're done with this and you've got this animation kind of set up the way that you want, you can take this animation, you can click on render and you can click on render video. And in this case, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this up to be an MP4 video. Um, we're not going to worry too much about most of these things. You can adjust like the resolution if you really want to. Um, remember that higher resolution does mean that it's going to take longer to render. But then you can also adjust things like like uh, turning anti-aliasing on, um, other things like that down below. But um, notice how this is setting a frame range of 1270. That's basically setting from zero to wherever we set that end, um, that end frame to be. But we're just gonna leave this as is. We're gonna click on export. We'll just pick this spot and click on save. And notice how this is gonna go through and this is going to render each one of these frames out. Now, depending on how complex your scene is, these rendered frames could definitely take longer. Um, this isn't always a fast process, though I do feel that character creator goes pretty quick when it comes to rendering these out. A lot of that is gonna be driven by your machine though, as well. All right, so once you get to this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on open. And this is gonna open up the animation file, but you can see how we've got this like full character walking around animation that we were able to create just by using our keyboard and some macro files. So this literally took me the time that it took to press some buttons on the keyboard. And um, it actually looks really good from an animation standpoint. So 
that's how you can create your first animation in iClone. We'll get a lot more in depth on some of this in the future. All right, so as we continue this series, we'll dive a little deeper into things like adding characters, adding other things into your scene, lighting. Leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see for iClone. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.